Hello everyone. I would like to thank Brigadier Gopi and the entire team for giving me this opportunity to talk on this interesting topic of dilemmas in fingertip reconstruction. There are many many dilemmas I believe in fingertip reconstruction. I have chosen the five most common dilemmas which uh, I have encountered in clinical practice. Close nail bed injuries nail bed injuries do we conserve or do we explore? If there are small soft tissue defects of the fingertips do we heal them by secondary intention or do we graft them or do we do a flap? If there is a distal terminal phalanx exposed, do we shorten the phalanx or do a flap? If a flap is needed, then either we do a homodigital flap or we go for a heterodigital flap. If we want to do a heterodigital flap, then do we prefer a cross finger flap or a thinner flap? So these are the five dilemmas on which we will be discussing. As you can appreciate, this is a closed nail bed injury with hematoma of the nail bed. Let us see what we did for this particular patient. As you can appreciate, this is a nail bed injury with hematoma of more than 50% of the nail bed involved. Here you can appreciate that there is fracture of the terminal phalanx which is displaced a bit. On exploration, we can see that there is discontinuity of the nail bed which obviously needs to be repaired. After repairing, the nail was again used as a splint. So the original nail should always be preserved and replaced as a biological dressing as it not only shapes and supports the nail bed, but it also prevents the adhesions between the roof and the nail bed and it provides splinting for the associated fracture as well. Along with that, it reduces the post-operative pain and improves the tactile sensation during healing. Also, some holes should be made in the nail bed, uh, in the nail plate for uh, further comfort and draining of the hematoma, which was not done in particular case. And here you can see outcomes at least after one to one and a half year of follow up. Another case with fingertip injury wherein we have a foreign body over here again with foreign body part of hematoma and some amount of peronychia in this region. On exploration we can see that there is irregularity in the nail bed and these irregularities can cause problems in the nail growth however since there was no laceration nail bed was not repaired and simply a nail plate was reposited and these are the outcomes at two years of follow up. It is important to note here that achieving a smooth nail bed without scars is crucial as a smooth nail bed helps prevent secondary deformities of the nail. So if we have a hematoma which is less than 25% of the nail bed, it is better to observe. If we have a hematoma more than 25% of the nail bed and is painful, we can trefine the hematoma. If our hematoma is more than 50% of the nail bed with a non-displaced fracture of the terminal fraction, we can also continue with trephination. If the hematoma is more than 50% of the nail bed with displaced or comminuted fracture, it is always better to explore and repair. Pain itself is an indication for trephination. So even if the hematoma is small but it is painful, we should always go for trephination. Similarly, for pediatric patients, trephination often is sufficient and exploration and repair is only needed if the nail fold is disrupted. Now coming to the second dilemma, what if we have a soft tissue defect without exposed bone tendons or critical structures? Do we permit healing by secondary intention or do we do a graft as is seen in this particular defect or do we do a flap as is seen over here? If you can appreciate over here, we have a fuller oblique soft tissue defect without any exposed bone for which a skin grafting was done. And in this image, you can see the dorsal view as well as the volar view of well settled graft. The nail bed appears to be reasonably okay. The nail growth appears to be reasonably okay. However, grafts are thinner and less durable than the native tissue. They do not 
produce or provide the same amount of padding which is abundantly clear over here and they are prone to break down they break down with repeated trauma and they tend to contract and may also be tender at times almost a similar soft tissue defect over here for which a py venkat swami advancement flap was done so we have a suture line over here and flaps are more durable than grafts they withstand trauma in a better way they offer long term functional and cosmetic advantages so they also have their set of disadvantages like they give a scar over the volar aspect of the finger so the suggested approach is healing by secondary intention is ideal for smaller defects and for those patients who understand and are compliant to frequent dressing changes it is very effective in children with reliable compliance grafts are to be used for superficial and dorsal fingertip defects and flaps are preferably used for deeper and volar defects where durability is needed decision making in fingertip soft tissue injuries without exposed bone is influenced by available resources patient's pain tolerance defect size and orientation as well as occupational or time of constraints so the next dilemma whenever we have a exposed terminal phalanx do we do a flap or do we shorten it when a part of distal phalanx is lost traumatically there are essentially two options we can either shorten the bone and give a smooth well padded stump that prevents later deformity or we attempt to preserve the length even if the bony support is incomplete which increases the risk of a hook nail deformity like this in both these fingers we have lost part of the distal phalanx for which we have covered the middle finger with a digital artery perforator flap and the index finger with atasoys lateral vis flaps and these are the post op outcomes wherein you can see the growth of the nail which is apparently not looking lice it is it is having a hook nail deformity so the general consensus is that a painful fingertip with an unstable hook nail is far worse both functionally as well as cosmetically than a slightly shortened but stable and smooth fingertip function and durability always is better than increased length we should always weigh in the occupation of the patient the aesthetic concerns and need for revision if needed like removal of the nail while taking decisions for these type of injuries now the next dilemma is if we have to do a flap do we do a homo digital flap or do we do a hetero digital flap now since we have already discussed vy advancement and digital artery perforator flaps which are homo digital flaps i thought let's discuss homo digital versus hetero digital flaps for the thumb now these two flaps are homo digital flaps and this third one is the hetero digital flap from the look of it from this view we are unable to make out the difference between whether it is a homo digital flap or a hetero digital flap so let us see these cases in detail so this is the radial thinner flap for a thumb defect wherein we are using the flap from the radial as well as the thinner aspect of the thumb now homo digital flaps tend to utilize tissue from the same injured finger which means that the donor site morbidity is restricted to a single digit we don't need to go looking at other normal digits for reconstruction patients can often return to work early because the injury is restricted to a single digit there is minimal immobilization as compared to that with hetero digital flaps this is a retrograde or a reverse flow flap so the chances of it being sensate are not good or rather it will take the same time as a hetero digital flap but whenever we do a vy or a venkat swami flap these flap are inherently sensate and they regain sensations immediately in the post operative period this is the brunelli flap another homo digital flap for managing the thumb defects now here you can see the scar of the donor site of the flap the scar on the donor site is one of the important drawbacks of the homo digital flap 
especially when the scar is on the volar aspect of the finger and this scar can occasionally be painful or sensitive especially during the activities which apply pressure on the pulp although rare this is a definite possibility we then have the option of a heterodigital flap cross finger flap is the commonestly performed heterodigital flap we have done this for the thumb here we are using an otherwise uninjured finger for this flap there can be unsightly donor scars extensor tendon adherence and even mallet deformities which can be present now here if you appreciate this is the donor site of the cross finger flap which is settled beautifully and there are no complications but the likelihood of complications is definitely going to be there the color mismatch over this particular region over the donor site is definitely going to be there and these are to be considered just to show another example of a neurovascular vy island flap done for a fingertip defect we can easily achieve up to 1.5 cm of advancement however care must be taken to prevent ip joint contracture so the homo digital flap is best for small to moderate defects hetero digital flap is best for larger volar oblique defects and homo digital flap should be preferred to hetero digital flaps for most cases at least that is my school of thought people vary in this always weigh the need of sensate cover donor finger morbidity and the stages required for surgery during the decision making process now the next dilemma is if we decide to go for a hetero digital flap do we go for a cross finger flap or do we go for a thinner flap which are probably two of the most common hetero digital flaps which we use in clinical practice now let us see these cases individually the cross finger flap is a very well established option it provides reliable coverage with a straight forward technique it is particularly advantageous in terms of donor morbidity as risk of post operative stiffness is low as compared to other flaps because of the way in which this flap is immobilized the texture of the dorsal skin as you can see over here is not a perfect match for the volar surface there is mismatch in quality sensations as well as durability of this flap the thinner flap on the other hand offers several distinct advantages particularly in terms of the tissue quality it replaces glabrous skin with glabrous skin giving a more natural and a durable outcome this tissue i think better withstands the demands of the fingertip function the donor site is almost always closed in a linear manner a linear manner however we did have to use a graft in this particular patient the biggest drawback of this flap is the predominant ip flexion which is very detrimental the oral volar plate shifts proximally now as we have discussed earlier both cross finger as well as thinner flaps are two stage flaps both require division at 3 weeks both are insensate flap and gradually they tend to acquire protective sensation at around 3 to 4 months or so but uh, even then when we have larger and volar oblique defects it is better to consider a cross finger flap thinner flap on the other hand is preferred for younger patients with supple joints and more so for index and the middle finger for the ring and little finger we can consider the hypothinner flaps thinner flap is also considered for those patients with specific aesthetic requirements they want glabrous skin over the fingertip rather than the skin on the dorsum of the finger which tends to look more darker having said that for most cases cross finger flap is a suitable flap than thinner flap always weigh the defect size patient age occupation and donor morbidity before taking a call and finally to conclude dilemmas rarely have perfect answers they just have trade offs dilemmas remind us that plastic surgery is both science and an art and every dilemma carries within it the seed of innovation thank you